All right, Edward Lawrence, thank you very much. Here now is litigation counsel for the New Civil Liberties Alliance, Janine Yunus. Janine, congratulations, by the way. You and a, a couple of attorneys general uh, are really putting a spotlight on something that most people were unaware of. We just were focused on this this board, this so-called Ministry of Truth that they were planning. We thought it was all over with, or at least some people did. But you've uncovered, what is it, 11, I, I think it's even more than 11 government entities, including the White House, all these uh, agencies and departments, etc. Uh, explain exactly what this victory means, at least in terms of, of getting a judge to agree to what you were proposing. Right. So, so far, we know of 11 federal agencies. There may very well be more. Uh, the White House hasn't been forthcoming. They had initially uh, made it sound as though there were much less. So the judge ordered yesterday that Anthony Fauci and his uh, press secretary, Jean-Pierre, have to answer questions. They have to answer specific questions about their communications with social media companies. And uh, they've even, uh, they even have to answer questions about whether two of our, or, uh, sorry, three of our plaintiffs who we named uh, and we know have been targeted by the White House to be silenced, um, whether they have uh, done anything with respect to them specifically. Who were these plaintiffs? Uh, so NCLA is representing Jay Bhattacharya and Martin Kuldorf, who are two of the uh, framers of the Great Barrington Declaration. They had eschewed lockdowns and other COVID uh, mitigation measures, saying that they caused more harm than good. And uh, they had directly been targeted by Anthony Fauci and Francis Collins. They had been called a danger and a menace. And we suspect that they have been silenced. They've been censored extensively on social media. And we suspect that that was at the behest of the Biden administration. And just for those who don't remember, I mean, we've had a couple of representatives on this show before from the Great Barrington Group. Uh, they turned out to be right. I mean, they were censored right. <laughs> for something that, uh, I mean, there were a lot of points that they made, so, but, but most of the significant points that they made back then, uh, including blaming China for a lot of what was going on, and at least in terms of the release of the pandemic, turned out to be true. That's right. And that's what's so shocking when you really read these emails. A lot of what uh, you know, the White House and the CDC are saying is misinformation and people need to be silenced about is questioning whether children should get the vaccine, questioning the origins of the virus, maybe whether it came from a lab, um, questioning whether masks are effective. These are this is all core political speech, protected speech. This is why we have a First Amendment, so that people can debate these things. And I don't think we've ever in United States history had a federal government who made a concerted effort like this to silence dissent from scientists, the most qualified people in the field to discuss these issues and to only allow uh, certain government scientists to have a point of view that's heard by the public on this subject. Well, I, frankly, the last time we heard of a major country doing something like this was the Soviet Union. The Soviet right. Union used science as a political tool yes. uh, in order to push its its communist policies. And of course, uh, many of those, if not all of them, were totally wrong. They didn't work in practice and they ended up killing people, killing millions of, of Soviet citizens. So, I mean, the point is, this is not something we want here. Have you heard anything from Dr. Fauci uh, or Ms. Jean-Pierre? Uh, no, not directly. But now they're going to have to answer these questions. And um, we're looking forward to seeing what, what lies ahead. And again, explain exactly what you want from them. Well, we want to know uh, with whom they've communicated from social media companies, uh, what um, Anthony Fauci has been talking to Mark Zuckerberg about, because we know that he gave Mark Zuckerberg, uh, sorry, Mike, Mark Zuckerberg gave him his private phone number. We want to know if they have directly targeted people. So our plaintiffs, um, the two that I mentioned, also Aaron Cariotti, who's another plaintiff, the disinformation dozen. We want to know if these people were specifically taken off social media because of them. So what we know so far is that um, the social media companies were doing the government's bidding in silencing certain points of view and taking down posts and um, on various topics. What we haven't seen so far is whether specific individuals were censored because of the government, except for Alex Berenson, uh, who has a separate lawsuit and we now know was directly targeted by the Biden administration and Twitter removed him, um, even though Twitter did not believe that he had violated their policies because Fauci and Biden wanted him silenced. Are you working with Alex? Are you, you combining forces to, to exchange information, et cetera? Um, I'm not entirely at liberty to talk about that, but uh, I do communicate with him a little bit. Uh, let me just ask about these 11 agencies. And I, I counted more than 11, by the way, if you include the White House. In it. But uh, agencies, members of the federal government, did they collude in their, in their efforts to get social media to sing their tune? 
Um, did, you mean, did they collude with did each other? Did they collude other? with each other, they, these it's, various agencies? It, I mean, was there kind of a, a central information hub that got them all together and, and divided their forces in particular ways? So, so far, we haven't seen that. It does look like they're operating uh, separately, although it's not clear because as I, I suspect that this comes from the top and that maybe we uh, might be able to find some things out through the discovery on uh, Fauci. Um, but so far, it looks like they're separate. But I think one really important note is that while it looks like collusion between the, co the companies and the government, it's really the government coercing these companies. Um, I mean, the, the government, Biden himself, uh, his press secretary, um, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, Alejandro Mayorkas, they made public statements threatening um, social media companies if they didn't do more to censor. And we've seen emails now where uh, you have Jen Easterly from DHS saying, uh, we have to get, you know, we have to get these companies to overcome their hesitation to work with the government. We see them, um, you know, using terms like mercifully, mercifully. <laughs> uh, we had answers for the White House about Alex Berenson was, uh, why Alex Berenson wasn't kicked off Twitter. So hmm. what we're really seeing is that they're under enormous pressure to do this so that they don't suffer um, repercussions. And uh, that is that's a, a clear First Amendment violation. Now, Janine, the, the pernicious uh, there's so many pernicious aspects to all this. That's why we have a First Amendment. And that's why any violation right. of it should be fought tooth and nail, and, which is why I'm so glad you're doing this. We're trying our best in the media to do it, but you're 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 really making progress here. But the most pernicious aspect is how it spreads. Uh, it may start with a, a public health emergency and they use that as a cover for for why it's necessary to do this. And then it then it spreads to issues like climate change and and then economic issues. And eventually it gets so that they're directing the entire social and economic values that that we have in this country. Do you see signs of that? Are there interactions on issues like, for example, Hunter's laptop? And I mean, did they use the same channels in order to contact social media? Absolutely. So actually, I went through, you know, thousands of pages of these documents. And what you, you have is sort of towards the beginning, you know, they're asking uh, Facebook to take down posts about how the vaccines have a microchip or the vaccines cause cancer, um, which we don't have evidence of at this time. Um, and you, OK, maybe that makes some sense that we don't necessarily want that out there. But then it's creeping into uh, questions about whether masks work, question, uh, questions about whether the uh, children should be forced to get the vaccine. And so this is sort of, again, why we have a First Amendment, why we don't want the government drawing the lines as to, uh, you know, what's protected speech and yeah. what's not. Uh, uh, and they even have jokes taken down there. <laughs> there are some Anthony Fauci parody accounts that the White House demands be taken down in the social media companies. Unbelievable. Are doing that. <laughs> and once again, it, it reminds you of what happened during the Stalin era in the Soviet Union, where yeah. they didn't allow joking about the great leader. Very yeah. quickly, Janine, we're way over time. But do you think we're going to win? Do you think the First Amendment will beat these attempts at, at government control? I do think so. Um, it's, this is, I think, the sort of quintessential First Amendment case of the contemporary era with social media, and uh, we have to win this. Janine Yunus, congratulations and excellent work. Uh, keep it Thank going. Thank you. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Well, a crack in confidence in American classrooms. Former Education Secretary Betsy DeVos is here to discuss that coming right up.